I'm Hudson. And I'm Brandon. And we are the Buff Dudes. And we're going to be answering some of your top questions that we've been asked over the years. And some of the questions that we just thought were kind of cool. So we're going to get started with the easy ones. What is your weight? I'm 230. And I am 218 at the moment. And it fluctuates, I would say. It does. It's not always that all the time, but... Right I would now. say when I'm in my best shape, it's closer to like 206, 209. Yeah, when you lean out, I mean, you, you, you're going to get a little lighter. So. I still got the winter bolt going. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Me too. How tall are you? I'm 6'2". And I am 6'1". I thought you were 6'2". I used to be 6'2". But I've learned that the <laughs> older you get, get the shrink. more you kind of shrink down a little bit. It's like bit. Yoda. I'm a little disappointed about the fact that I'm 6'1 now. So my uh, my <laughs> shoes are just going to grow a little yeah, bit taller. Exactly. exactly. How old are you? Uh, 36. And 38. How long have you been brothers? All our lives. We have, since we were born. Yeah. When did you start taking lifting seriously? Mm. We both started about 14 because yeah. that was the the first, the earliest you could go into the gym. So we went along with our dad. We waited quite a while because we were super anxious. Because he brought us there when we were like 12, but we actually couldn't go into the weight room yet. Yeah. So it was like this like area of... He smuggled us into his gym bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, was like this, it was like gremlins or something moving around his exactly. bag and the gym All dude was like, like what, what's, what's in there? that? And I would say, honestly, I probably started to take it seriously around 30. There was times in my teens and 20s I did it but we used to have a friend who said there's people that get it and people who don't get it and that just kind of was a philosophy he had in regards to life in general and I don't really think I got it until I was about 30 because I realized then I'm doing it not only for my body or how I look but also just how I feel and it feels damn good so that's that's about the time I really felt everything click and I would say for me it would probably be around 18 uh, I we kind of all had this discussion and, you know, after watching like a movie like Pumping Iron, like, man, these guys are cool and stuff. And then we're like, man, that'd be cool to compete in a bodybuilding competition. And I took it seriously. 18, I competed when I was 19 and I went all in. I was like obsessed with it. That's Brent all I did. took all those chips and went, I did. Yeah. yeah. That was it. That yeah. was it for me. And then, and then after that too, it was like, I was so pumped about the whole experience. Yeah. Yeah. I just continued to do that. And I just wanted to see how far I could push myself and, how good a shape I could get in. That was really cool to see Brandon stick with it because we had an idea. It was kind of funny because as we were doing it, we were getting firewood for the season. Mm -hmm. So it was like, we were with our dad, we were, t we were chopping firewood. And that's when we were saying, we gotta compete because we can only do it while we're still teenagers because we'll be in the teenage class and it'll yeah. be a little easier than when you all and of a sudden- I'm the only one that did it. <laughs> I'm the only one that did it. So I, I took was, the bait. Yeah, he did, he did. He totally fell into peer pressure, but credit to credit to you. I mean, you he stuck with it big time. It took me about an extra 12 years to <laughs> get to where he hey, was. Hey, but you did it. That's it the is most true. important It thing. is true. I think that's part of the reason it works too because people can look at us and be like, Hey, it's never too late to start because you can look at Brandon who took it seriously right off the bat and then I took a little longer, but we're still here. Yeah. What do you do to keep yourselves motivated? Uh, setting goals is yeah. a big thing for yeah. me for sure. I mean, having something that you know what you're working for. True. If you just randomly go in the gym, you're like, I just want to look good. Yeah. I mean, then that's pretty nonspecific. You know well, that's I mean? why it took me to get to 30 to realize yeah. that it's what I wanted to do because when you don't have a goal, you're like, why am I doing this? I mean, I want to look good. You know, I don't want to look like the guy on Instagram, but it takes a little bit more than that. I heard someone say something very insightful to me, at least motivation will get you out of bed for a day. A goal will get you out of bed every day. Yeah. And that's, there you go. That's what's motivating. Having so, a goal. Yeah. Would you be willing to come out with a cookbook? That's an excellent question. Yes, we absolutely would. And let us know. Yeah. If you want to see it, maybe this Christmas. If you could only choose one exercise per body part, what would it be? Man, that's a tough one. There's a lot of exercises out there. I would say probably the Golden Five, because that pretty much covers the whole body. And those those movements, those exercises are so awesome. And they're they the get, classics. Yeah, they get so much done. Absolutely. I yeah. mean, so let's say squats for legs, you do pull-ups or bend over rows for back bench press for chest, overhead press for shoulders. I mean, you're taking care of everything right in one exercise. So definitely those are the classics, but you can't forget the barbell curls and the school crushers, baby. You gotta have those arms. You gotta build the arms. <laughs> so a few isolations in there as yeah, well. Yeah, those are my two favorite probably. Of all time. That's how I build my arms, barbell and school crushers. What do you do to kill the hunger cravings? 
for me personally, that was a huge, huge setback because you would binge and purge. So I would have all during the week, I would try to eat super strict, you know, the uh, boiled chicken with the broccoli, and then I would kind of just have a huge setback over the weekend. So I found for me what worked, you have the pizza, you have the cereal, you have all those things you already like, you just make healthier versions of those things. So you never feel like you're missing out. You know, I think a lot of people make that mistake is where they don't eat enough. They think the less they eat, the more fat they're gonna lose. And that's not necessarily the case. So you wanna make sure you eat enough. Because a lot of times if you don't eat enough, then you're gonna wanna binge yeah. on stuff. So yeah, just make sure you have a well-rounded diet and uh, planning things out can help quite a bit too to make sure that food is always available. Does it matter how long you work out time-wise? It really depends on what workout plan you're doing. A lot of times me and Brian will do hypertrophy, which lasts about 60 minutes when we're doing something bigger, such as like a five by five, lots of compounds, it'll last about 90 minutes. Basically whatever fits your schedule and whatever fits your goal too. I mean, obviously if you don't have a lot of time in the gym, a high intensity interval training can work really well. You go in the gym 20 minutes, you're done. But if you have a little bit more time than you know something like a hypertrophy type training or bodybuilding type split or a five by five, a full body. But the good thing about the full body is you only have to be in the gym like three days a week. That's true. That's the one good yeah. thing. So kind of, you just really try to pick not only what works for your goals, but also what works for your schedule. Biggest fear about the gym when you first started? Everything. It was, I was like the unknown, man. Like you walk in the gym, you're like, whoa. Oh, when our dad smuggled us into that bag, <laughs> we like, it. Into, like we, we came out of the womb, sweaty and slimy, just sliding We were actually like, born from a gym bag. That's yeah, where we actually that's true. came from. That is true. Our womb was a gym bag. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mom. That sounds so bad. Do each of you have a single program you do most frequently? We have our things we fall back on. I mean, the five by five we're huge fans of. Again, the hypertrophy training. We've been doing uh, some high intensity interval training lately, which we enjoy. I think that's a problem. In the beginning, I really only did one yeah. type of, I didn't even really know there was any yeah. kind of other workouts available. So I really only did those bodybuilding type workouts. But later on, as you kind of learn things, that's when like the five by five, the full body or high intensity interval training, I did like German high volume training. Just trying things out can become pretty interesting. And you know, and it really goes to show you everything works, really. You yeah. just stick with it and be consistent with it. That's the important thing. As long as you're in there, you got it because if you spend too much time researching going, I don't know, maybe I should do this, but this guy says that's bad and this good. You gotta go in there sometimes and learn for yourself. What did you do for work before Buff Dudes? We were our dad's bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Let's clarify that, by the way. We were uh, manual laborers. We uh, spotted screws for our dad because he owned a drywall company and he basically put us to work at 10 years old. Yeah, you know those old school farmers who would have kids just to have farm hands? Um, That's what we were. Yeah, Except basically. It was a farm. It no. was a drywall job. It was. So um, we were actually shocked he didn't have more kids. That's true. Or maybe they just didn't survive the screw oh, spotting see, process so that's we kept it. having more. Yeah. We don't... We, we're there like Spartans. Kids, we were the strongest kids. Damn right. The other ones he drowned in drywall mud. <laughs> <laughs> For Hudson, can you take me through your recovery mobility exercises? Mine were very simple. Uh, I found really great success in using water as resistance training. Obviously, I was very weak, so I would go to the pool every single morning, which was great motivation to get up against setting a goal. And you would just walk, walk through the water. I had a lot of problem with my dorsiflexion or when you would raise your toes off the ground. I had very limited mobility, so I did a lot of dorsiflexion exercises. And my mobility, it's not quite where it was, but it's very, very close, so I'm very happy with it. So it was a lot, um, single leg Romanian deadlifts, walking lunges were two other ones. I mean, that was inspiring for me, watching him do all that with determination, with motivation. You can really accomplish anything, because yeah, that was a pretty major break. Video idea that went too far. That, <laughs> yeah. we're laughing because this was actually pretty recent. Today, yeah. in fact. Mm -hmm. But not just today, yesterday, the day before, the day before. Yeah, it's we been had, a couple weeks long now. Or something it, like it has, <laughs> and we had an idea. We did the Can You Survive the Ultimate Montage movie versus reality, which was Rocky IV. So we thought, why don't we follow it up with one of our other favorite movies, Predator. Oh yeah. And it just went all downhill from there. Yeah, it went off the rails. That, that's yeah. a lot, and that's what's hard too, because you have an idea and you, you have a vision of what you want it to become, but then sometimes when, you, when it starts, starts happening, you realize quickly that it ain't happening. 
Yeah, we wanted to build all the traps from Predator to see how well they worked, and in our brains that sounded like such mm -hmm. a great idea. And the more we did it, the more we're like, "This is this is <laughs> That's a, way too much." Yeah. Man. yeah, our dad was working on it yeah. full time. Uh, Brandon's girlfriend Michaela was helping with the camera work. It just, everything failed. Every trap failed. I think that's one hard thing that you realize when you try to wear too many hats, yeah. uh, things can go wrong pretty quickly. Yeah. You know, obviously when you're trying to handle too much, trying to be in front of the camera, trying to make it look good, you know, with the editing and the the, the camera, the lighting, the sound, it, it it's just too much. And that's when you have to, you have to just step back a little bit. And it was like, what are we even doing? Is this just an excuse for us to dress up as like the guys from Predator and try to, <laughs> try to live out our fantasy was, of living yeah. through the Predator movie? It was one <laughs> big was cosplay insane. that just went into the shitter. So yeah. that was just one of the videos that went wrong, but we could probably actually spend a whole other video just oh, talking yeah. about that subject. Definitely. Is there anything the buff Duke can't do? He can't stop doing. <laughs> he, does, he can't can't. <laughs> he just does. He's just a shark. If he stops, he's done. What was the hardest part of breaking your leg? I would think breaking it is probably the hardest part. That was part, hard. Right? Yeah. That was definitely hard. The only thing that was a little harder was that after the surgery, they didn't insert the nerve block right, which is basically like the painkiller. So for the first night post-surgery, I didn't have the painkiller and I wanted that leg gone. Just take it. I told, I gave Brandon the hacksaw. I'm like, hack it off, man. I put the stick in my mouth and everything. Yeah. How has your channel changed since starting it? It's it's the same, yeah, but just is. like, yeah. we, we still kept all the same, yeah. uh, you know, cheesiness, yeah. entertainment, funny. Like we try to do all the same stuff we yeah. started with, but yet I think just the ambitious yeah. <laughs> like you know the vol like the volume of videos and the scope of the videos have increased quite a bit they have sometimes too much uh, yeah for better yeah. or worse just right. like the predator video exactly but yeah not a lot has changed as far as like what we're setting out to accomplish we just want entertainment with some education and we just want it to be fun oh yeah how integral would you say the support of your parents has been for the channel huge i mean yeah, yeah. we wouldn't be here without them no. honestly uh, in more in more ways than one. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> our dad, obviously, we're inspired by him, seeing him go to the gym. That yeah. was one of our starting points of being introduced to the gym. But also our mom, too. She's yeah. always been into fitness. She's been in amazing shape. She has amazing genetics, and they've always been very healthy We got our, our arms from our mom. Oh, definitely. And in addition to inspiring us, they still help us to this day. Obviously, our dad, you see in our videos all the time. But our mom is actually the one responsible for all the packing, shipping, and emails for our t-shirts and plans. So... Without her, I mean, she's been absolutely instrumental. What's the worst part of building a business and what are some of the things you would have done better at the beginning? We grew very slowly, mm -hmm. which we were very happy about because in retrospect, if we would have maybe like blown up overnight, I feel that would have been really hard to handle. Whereas we went so slow, yeah. we were able to find each thing one step at a time. Like for instance, getting our mom to help with the shipping and doing all that side. There's a lot more that goes yeah. into it than we thought there was. Yeah. And it is a lot of those kind of small details that yeah. you don't think are important that end up becoming more important. I mean, you so, gotta do your research oh, you and do. you can't neglect things. And I'm glad we were able to do one thing at a time because if we had to do it all at one time, it would have been hard. Are you guys still planning on making an app? Yes, we are. It's been a long time in the yeah. making. We've had multiple developers helping us, but we're very hopeful that we get one out this year. Please, God. <laughs> I know. Let it work this I time. I know, right? God. We're starting to get PTSD over not getting this app out. <laughs> Is it going to happen now? <laughs> Since I'm Polish, I'm curious, how did Hudson meet his wife? Through YouTube. Uh, most of what we do is on YouTube. It's where we spend a lot of time and we meet a lot of people through that. And I met her through a video called The Pump that we did years ago that she was a huge fan of. And she liked the pump. She did. <laughs> Two kids later, it That's, worked. Yeah. <laughs> Too much pump. Too so much. there's not going to be much more um, of that. Pumping and humping. <laughs> Brandon went there. I'm sorry. <laughs> People must send you progress stories and photos. Which of those hit you right in the feels? All of them. Definitely. True. Yeah. yeah. I think by the time we had released our 12-week plan and we started to get a lot of those emails or posts saying that they'd went through our plan, I mean, that was hugely inspiring for us and it made us just feel very proud that we were able to help even if in a small way because sometimes with the disconnect with doing things online or through a video camera you really don't realize people are watching what you do so seeing the motivational stories and videos and compliments i mean that's just we can't thank you enough 
And that kind of goes on with how do you guys stay motivated? Well, yeah. that's one. That's a big part. That's right true. There, is seeing other people's uh, their inspiring stories, their transformations, and you know, very generously giving uh, part of that credit to us. You know, which is is incredible. Thank you. We're gonna move on because there's gonna be some <laughs> onions getting cut in this room if we if we don't. What was the moment you realized you wanted to do this for a living? From the very beginning. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's we, why we did it. That's, that's why true. we started it. Yeah. We didn't really know how it was gonna be a living, yeah. but we were just hoping it could be. We were hoping it would be a hobby which would grow into much more and very slowly over time, that's exactly what has happened. So consistency yep. and just the desire. Is, and the love of it. Yeah, I mean, true. you just really have to love it. Yeah. And that's what's cool is getting to a point of being able to do what you love full time. What type of video editing software do you use? We use Premiere Pro. How do you bring up weak points? I would say isolations for me. That's really helped over the years uh, because the whole point of utilizing isolations is being able to focus and pinpoint a certain muscle group. And of course, that can be very valuable when you're only doing compound movement, especially maybe with like a barbell. It's a bilateral movement. You're using both sides at the same time. So a lot of times there can be, um, uh, a muscle, uh, especially your dominant side, can start taking over. And little do you know, you're making and creating imbalances in the body. So utilizing isolation exercise can really help bring a lot more um, emphasis into a certain muscle and unilateral exercise as well, like with a dumbbell. True. And then also admitting what your weak points are. Just being <laughs> That's the first step. Yeah, that's the first step. Because, you know, for a lot of dudes at least, it's going to be calves, it's going to be things of those nature. And that sometimes they're not the most fun, but you really got to go, look, man, I just got to do it. Because you want to be symmetrical. And it takes time. Yeah, it, it really does. does. Don't feel like you're just going to do calf raises for a week or two. Yeah, <laughs> and true. Bring up your weak points. It might yeah. take months, if not years, for some people. Very true. What kinds of hobbies do you guys have? Any musical instruments? Played some drums and bass. He was in band. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I played at the fair, the local fair. That's how big I got. He did. <laughs> runner up. <laughs> I was this, runner up, man. This man almost made the God. finals. And he was, it was stolen from him it at the was, last second by man. lip syncers. God, can you believe that? Still bitter. That's like Metallica being stolen from that one. Jethro Toll. Jethro Toll, man. It was 1988 Grammys all over again. Fuck. He was that, robbed. Yeah. But, uh, all... <laughs> Doing this takes up a lot of our time. That's true. And we I have want, less time for hobbies. That, that is very well, true. Especially with you with having kids. Yeah. And, yeah. and you got to learn how to manage that. But I, I, I do really, really enjoy writing. That's mm -hmm. what I do a lot of. I just get a lot of satisfaction out of it. And of course, for Buff Dudes, we do a lot of writing on some of our more creative skits. Brandon does a ton of drawing. Mm -hmm. I mean, a I lot. Of, yeah. Yeah. And that that's what's helped too, again, yeah. for Buff Dudes, you know, yeah. um, helping out sometimes maybe with a logo or whatnot. Um, so that's what's nice about having a business and hobbies that you can still use those hobbies exactly. in some kind of capacity yeah. to even help the business. Yeah. So we have answered all of the comments we got over Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And now we're going to be answering the most common questions we've got since creating Buff Dudes. These are the ones we get time and time again. And the first one is going to be, when did you start lifting? We kind of already answered that one. Yeah. But it was about 14 yeah. when we finally were able to go to the gym with our dad. How do I start? Just start. Exactly. That's Just it. go in there. Even if you got to do push-ups at home, I get to feel the motions, mm -hmm. the the mechanics of it, the form, body weight squats. I mean, there's so much you can do just in your bedroom. Absolutely. And I think I like to use an analogy that I fell into where I would start buying books. And I feel like the more books I bought, the more information I had, the more information would get me in the right direction and make me start. But that's not going to help. You know, just the more books you buy is not going to... You're almost like Beginning building journey. in a way, and not a knock against books, I love books, but you could begin to build a prison of books almost, Absolutely. because then you're getting conflicting information, you're like, well, this guy says this, that guy says that. I mean, sometimes you just gotta go yeah, in there. And, and you can utilize books, of course, but maybe when you're already made that consistency. How do I get in shape when I work 12 hour shifts? That depends on what kind of shape you wanna get into. Me yeah. and Brandon, at times in our life, have worked 12 hour shifts, and you gotta make sacrifices. 
That, uh, yeah, I, absolutely. I mean, scheduling is a huge thing. Obviously, working 12-hour shifts, as long hours, the, f the thing you don't want to do is probably get home and go work out. Uh, you're tired. Uh, maybe getting up earlier, trying to go to bed earlier and get up earlier and getting your workout done early in the morning. Maybe doing a high-intensity interval training so you're only doing it for 20 minutes, and that way you can get uh, your mind on work after that pretty quickly. Uh, but yeah, sacrifices have to be made too. I mean, sometimes, you know, maybe you can't go out to the bar on the weekends or hang out with friends when you know you have to get to bed at a certain time so you can get up and work out. What's the best time of day to work out? That can really vary again based upon your schedule, but I found my best results right in the morning because not only physically do I feel good, mentally it's a great way for me to start, and then I don't have the stress of missing it later in the day. I've worked out at all times of the day, in the morning, in the evening, late at night, and really, I don't think it really matters as long as you get in there, but the only thing that does matter, like you were saying, is your schedule, yeah. to make sure it works, to make sure it doesn't ruin the rest of your day or the next day. What's the best time of day to eat when you're hungry? <laughs> 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 That's what I found. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Just eat. And I've really fallen into breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I fill up my calories then. If you got to have mm. a few snacks, you have a few snacks. What supplements should I use? You first want to get the major supplements in order, which would be water, of course, whole foods. I mean, that's supplementing the gains that you're making yeah. in the gym. Which, those aren't really supplements. Not those, really. those are necessary. Really. I'm only <laughs> saying it because they are necessities, yeah. which you're sometimes ignored because you're like, well, instead of these whole foods, maybe I'm going to take the pre-workout when you're realizing, well, that's not yeah. really what you should be having right yeah, now. Yeah, supplements are supplemental. They need to be yeah. on top of what you're already doing or what you need to be doing, like food and water and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And I don't think there's one major supplement. Obviously, there's some supplements that have a little bit more studies, maybe creatine and glutamine, and then those actually come from natural sources. You can get those same amino acids from the foods you eat. So that's why usually if you eat enough healthy foods, you don't need supplements. Exactly. But I do remember there was there was one supplement in particular that you felt like you needed when you were a kid, and that was Eno Explode. Oh yeah. When that thing came out, man, that was like a shot of adrenaline. You would take that scoop, or maybe two scoops if you were brave enough, and hit those fucking weights. <laughs> You're like, yeah. No, totally. Like and, that, beast. It, and that's sometimes what you need is just a mental edge. I it mean, is. and maybe you like cotton candy flavored water. So you're yeah. like, yeah, I can't work out before, until I have this. Yeah. And this makes me feel like I can yeah. lift more. It makes me feel yeah. like I want to get to the gym. And that is one a huge important thing about supplements. They, that, they can make yeah. you feel that like maybe you're getting results or that you want to hit the weights yeah. harder. So it's that placebo effect. Yeah, totally. What's your best workout split? I would say if you want to purchase one of our plans. You'll find all our best workout splits. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Little plug. Bing! Yeah. Buffdudes.us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I love bro splits. Yeah. I mean, you know, and they weren't called bro splits back then. It was just a bodybuilding type program. Yeah. You know, you're focusing on a little bit more. Someone always finds some derogatory yeah. way of explaining uh, something. Oh, you like the bro splits? Yeah. Like, what the hell is that? Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I was the guy that bought all the muscle magazines when I was younger and basically just trained like those guys because I was like, well, shit, they look But good. you're I consistent mean, where I wasn't. Yeah. And that was a big reminder, again, that he was in there doing it. How much cardio do I have to do? That really depends on you. There's multiple factors. You know, we'll do some steady state, again, kind of for the mental thing sometimes. Not so much maybe even for, like, I got to lose weight, I got to do this or that. I think a lot of people you can use cardio as an excuse to eat more. Yeah. Like, well, I can eat more. It reduces the guilt. Yeah, it does. Like, well, I ate a lot, so I'll bump up my cardio, or I'll do more cardio so I can eat more. Yeah. And that shouldn't be the case, for yeah. sure. Cardio shouldn't be used in, in that kind of way. Because then it's just not fun. No. You're torturing yourself. You're on the treadmill when you don't want to be. Mm -hmm. And we do got to say we're going to start our live hit workouts every Saturday at 9 a.m. on our Buff Dudes Workouts channel. So join us if you want to do oh, some yeah. cardio. It's good workouts, good cardio, boom. How do I stay in shape all year round? That can be difficult. Yeah. I remember kind of trying to do that when I was younger, and it, it can be very difficult, mainly because you're going to have a lot of um, distractions, I guess. The holidays you know. come around, oh, yeah. eating more, and you, again, you don't want to beat yourself up. So, I mean, it's the level of staying in shape mm -hmm. you want to do. You see a lot of these kind of like Instagram body types, and you're going, I mean, I've been there many times. You're thinking, I can never look like this year round, and you really shouldn't. And it looks like they're in that shape year yeah. round, but usually it's just. They that's... had one photo shoot, yeah. and they took 3,000 photos, oh. and they're just slowly dripping them out oh, all yeah. year round. No yeah. one stays in that kind of shape yeah. year round. I mean, bodybuilders, it's impossible. That's why they train up to three months yeah. to get in specific shape. After that, they're like, okay, now I gotta. I mean, it's not good for your body. Yeah. It's too much for your body, not only physically, but mentally too. So, you know, you can have those goals where you get in really good shape, but don't feel like you have to have that kind of peak kind of yeah. fitness 
for, for a long period of time. Stay in a shape which feels healthy and natural for you, and then when you wanna bump it up for periods of time, by all means do it, but don't feel like you have to meet this expectation year round. Oh, we're on to our final question. Oh no, it's this final is, question. This is the big one. The big one. Cue the dramatic music. Let's do it. Are you on or have you ever taken steroids? <gasps> no. No, that's gonna be a no for that's me. I, be, I, I think we should probably both clarify. Yeah. We have never taken steroids. And we never will. Exactly. And, and we are not currently on steroids. No, no. And you gotta cover all bases. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. We do. Yeah. We definitely have to cover all bases. Because yeah, they're like, well, they didn't the say they will. The conspiracy theorists are gonna exactly. start typing real quick. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, when I was younger, again, when we talk about, I was just super obsessed with the workout. That's all I did. I pretty much sacrificed everything just for eating correctly. Your life working was out. working that, out. That was I mean, it. and I, I gotta truly say, obviously, being his brother, being around him all the time. I mean, we would go out, turning 21. He just, he wouldn't do it. He'd just drink water and he'd get ready to eat his chicken. I was that words. guy. He was. I was, I was like, that guy. <laughs> I was the asshole. But hey, like, but I was a designated fun, driver. That was true. This man was a god. <laughs> yeah, before like, Uber. Brandon's here. <laughs> yeah, the Uber's yeah. here. <laughs> Which was just me. <laughs> the Uber creator saw Brandon. He's like, <laughs> yeah. there's something here. <laughs> this guy drives everyone home at night. So. Damn, I wish I would have bought stocks in uh, that. I know. And the funny thing is, when I was younger in my 20s, uh, early 20s, mid 20s, a lot of times I would get people that would come up to me in the gym and say, hey, what kind of supplements do you take? I'd be like, I don't know. I just I could take creatine every once in a while, maybe some endo explode. And they're like, no, what kind of supplements? And I was like, oh, no, I don't take that kind of stuff. And at first, I took it as a compliment. I'm like, well, if people think I'm on steroids, then I must be doing something right if I look that good. But of course, later on, then you start kind well, of Well, it begins little, to negate all the hard work. Yeah, then and like, then it's a little frustrating. Work, yeah. And people just say, oh, it's just because of that. And you're like, that's not even anything to do with it. And what is the line of how good a shape you can get into before you, yeah. you know what I mean? That's what's right. always hard to ha wrap my head around. And I'm only saying all this because I'm a little irritated. I've never been accused of being on <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what do I have to look like? What's, it, what's it take? Is it the vascularity? Is it like the size? I don't know. Maybe that's gonna be my goal this year. I'm gonna be, how can I look like I'm on steroids? Yeah. Well, oh, that's natural. a good, that's a good video yeah. idea. There you go. Look for it soon. <laughs> <laughs> so, hope you enjoyed all these questions. I know we've been with you for quite a long time. For those of you who have made it all this way, you've probably been sitting on the toilet for a while, so your legs are probably pretty asleep. So don't get up too fast. No. You're gonna fall on your face. Don't. Been there. Done that. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know if you ever want a Q&A in the future, if you have some more questions we didn't answer, and I guess until next time, stay